Hey guys, it's me Day again and in this video I just want to do a quick discussion and talk about something that has been really hard to figure out myself. I had to do a lot of research and that is space flight. So space flight in this game is quite different from atmospheric flight. So they're going to have both in this game. Now, you might already know this, but I'm just going to go through it quick, briefly. Atmospheric flight is more like the flight we know here on Earth, right? Flying with um, friction, resistance, gravity, a down and up, all the, everything you know about flight. But in space, there's none of that. And, and, and in this game, I think they're, gonna, they're doing it right, where they have to figure out the correct balance w between ultra realism and fun. Like if it was ultra realistic, it, it might not be as fun as you think it would be. <laughs> like a lot of people are calling for, they wanted exactly what the space pilots deal with now in space, but in doing that it might take away from some of the action and the pace. So they, they, they're trying to find the right balance. And in this video I've rounded up all the information I could from the different forum posts from Wingman's Hangar, all mostly from Chris Roberts. And I just want to talk about it. And this, before I start, I'm not a physics expert. <laughs> I don't know anything really about physics. All I know is the basics here and what we're dealing with. And I thought I'd make an informative video because people are have a ton of misinformation. So let's start it out. The physics simulation in Star Citizen he calls as Newtonian. So Newtonian, what does that mean? So Newton says that an object at rest is not actually stationary. It's just that it is not accelerating or decelerating. It's just, it's still moving, but it's not going fast or slower. Like, kind of like us sitting at home in our desks, we're spinning around. <laughs> Second point I wrote down is there's no drag in space. So that's, that's the big difference, obviously, right? There's no resistance. You, you throw something, it's never going to stop. So remember that. Third thing, the IFCS in-game, or as it's called, intellect, Intelligent Flight Control System that all the ships have, generally handles taking the pilot's inputs, so the desired pitch, the yaw, roll, and speed, and translates them into actions for the thrusters and ship to take to adjust the ship's velocity vector in the direction the pilot wants to go. So what does that mean? It means you want to go to this direction, you say point A to point B, and that requires a lot of specific and special thruster movements to get you the exact coordinates. So fire on the left side, fire on the bit counter on the right side, just to try to get you in the right position. And that's a pretty complicated to, thing to do on your own. The system will do it within human acceptable tolerances. So it will not change your vector in a way that could cause harm to you. So that's a key thing. When that, when that system's on, it will not let you push yourself too hard that you can cause yourself to black out or get hurt. So Chris Roberts' post suggests you'll be able to do a lot of neat things by toggling these flight modes in game. So I guess that you'd be able to do some cool things like jousting circles and be able to program your 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 computer to have different maneuvers and um, tolerances to your to your player and I expect that the more expensive computers will be able to do a lot more than cheap starting computers now that we've talked about turning let's talk about accelerating and decelerating so slowing down is caused by the pilot to tell the computer that he wants to be traveling at a lower speed it's not an actual um, physical you break or you, you it's you know you hit your hard brakes it's actually telling your computer I need to be at this speed like you'll be by managing your buttons you'll be dro dropping and lowering your speeds so then the, the computer will communicate with the ship's thruster and adjust it accordingly so that's why if you need that computer if you're trying to do this on your own it's gonna be a lot harder to maintain speeds and decelerate smoothly and do all those basic functions. So now let's talk about specific roles and how you can, how, in my opinion, how you can maximize the potential using your computer and using the, the physics in game. 
So picture you're in a freelancer city and you're doing exploration or trading. In the game, if you turn off your engines and your IFCS, you'll continue to coast at the same velocity. So what does that mean? That means you get yourself up to the max speed in the game, which we'll get to in a minute. And you know that you're exiting you know, populated space and you're going somewhere far and you're not sure if there's going to be a starfarer out there who's you know, selling fuel to you. You should shut your engine off and turn off even your computer and just let yourself go. Like, you won't lose any speed, you'll just stay at that same speed. Now different ships obviously are going to get there faster, but if you get, get yourself to that max speed and just shut everything off, now you save fuel. And fuel is the biggest uh, money sink in the game, that's straight from Chris Roberts. So fuel in itself is consumed by using your thrusters or main engines, right? You're, if you coast, you're not going to use your fuel. But if you decide as you're flying that you're going to change your vector slightly at all, it's going to use some fuel to burn. So remember that. Far away f refueling stations, use this tactic. Turn off your ships. Don't just sit there holding f forward because they are going to put a cap on it. And oh, and I should say that the reason they are doing a cap is because it's they've decided a, a practical speed in that if you're going too fast in space, if you think about this, and you alter your, your course by like a one degree, you, you'll tear your ship apart. So they've kind of made a certain um, speed that they're going to hold to. So back to the computers, more advanced. IFCS systems will allow you to turn off parts of its override or it'll allow you to interpret your inputs differently. Remember how we were talking about that previously? So for example, I think you could tell it you want to go into orientation and not vectoring mode where it will take your joystick inputs as, as like a solely ship orientation input and try not to correct your ship's velocity to, to be aligned in the direction your ship's point. They're limiting the ships that you can fly to 0.2 speed of light. So that being said, figuring out an intercept course for uh, say you're, you see a ship going at that speed, you see that your freelancer we're talking about going at 0.2 light, you gotta f now in your head and on your com some of good computers, tracking computers, will be able to figure out the angle and the intercept course that you can take to get that ship. So a ch crappy old computer won't tell you that. It may tell you, oh, okay, that ship's going at this speed. Well, now you got to figure out kind of how to cut them off. Top speed will probably be less than the speed of your weapon. It's got to be in order to make it fun. So expect that if you're both traveling at point to the speed of light, that if you're within range and you fire, it's going to hit you. It's not just going to stay behind you forever and ever and ever. Top speed will probably be dependent on the size of ship, like we said earlier. They haven't balanced it, I'm sure, but small ships having the same cap as the large ones, I'm sure, is going to have. But the small ship or the ship with the better engine will be able to reach that limit a lot faster. And I bet you adding mass to say your freelancer or your trading or whatever trading ship you have is also going to lower that acceleration speed but they are going to have to figure it out where people are able to run from fights like if you can't run from fights that's just not fun and if you can't chase down also it's not fun so the way they're going to maintain this newtonian physics you know, have plausible explanations for these speed is keeping it at a point where that that's where they've thought is 0.2 speed of light, and they're not breaking any physics rules at that at that speed. That's but this is all claimed from Chris Roberts. Don't take my. <laughs> and so, the goal is is to take real world human tolerance to G force and use it in interesting ways to give some rhyme and reason as to why Star Citizen dog fights happen at low velocity so it's easy when you're figuring out you know that straight line chasing people or just traveling 
that's the easy part. The dog fighting is, I think, uh, one of the main reasons why they're going down to a lower G-force and a lower, or sorry, lower speed. So G-force, it's in this game, they're going off of what's similar to like the real life. So you will be able to do in different directions. You can stay in like up to nine G's, really hard, left to right. But negative G's, they're gonna keep it down. So negative G's, if you don't know is if uh, in certain directions, like if you go into a dive, high speed dive, and the blood gathers, and as you pull up, you're going faster than the blood can move down, and what happens is it pools in the head, and you get, actually get red outs. So they are inclu including blackouts and red outs in the game. But until I see it, I don't know how it's gonna work, right? I mean, it's... <sighs> It's not. It, it's definitely not going to be something that's um, perfect at launch. You're going to have to tweak it, I'm sure. But in saying that, when we're talking about blackouts and redouts, they have said when you look at um, the 350R, some of the posts of it, the 300 series, the racing variant. He said there, there's going to be special racing suits. And so, what are these racing suits going to do, right? Does that mean that in game we're going to have special suits that are going to allow you to that you can buy that push you harder that keep your blood flowing I mean why not so that's my that's pretty much it I just want to do a quick talk remembering just getting people thinking that this game's going to be different in space there's no plans yet for atmospheric flight but when that happens I'm sure that's going to be a lot e a lot different it, may, it might be a lot easier it might be a lot harder who knows but in space, no drag. If an object's moving, it's not stopping. And I do have one other question that I'm going to add to this. Right, if your ship's flying and you disable the engines, will it keep moving? It should, in theory, right? But those are questions that you're going to ask. Like I ask myself, are they going to keep that in? Like if a freelancer's flying by and I shoot it a whole bunch of times and it blows its engines and thrusters out, is it just going to keep traveling at that? 0.2 speed of light until it hits something because that's really what happened or am I gonna have to use a tractor beam to slow it down all things that in order to make it fun I bet you they're gonna tweak because if it, if it was too space like it might be it might be a little bit annoying I should say that but anyways that's my video I know it's I'm not an expert on physics <laughs> you don't have to tell me that but I just thought I'd start the discussion out so thanks for watching I'm Day. Please subscribe right away for more crazy videos. I'll see you on the next one. Later.